Today's reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 11 to 15. The conversion of Lydia. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to De- to Neapolis and from there to Philippi which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day we went outside by the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatria and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us.
It is so exciting to see more and more people joining our choir that it takes minutes for people to walk back to the choir loft. And we're just going to sit and be happy about that um, and joyful about all the people that are sharing their gifts of song and music and singing together. Let us pray. Give thanks, O God, for all the gifts that are shared in this place, for people who show up with their presence, for people who show up and make coffee, for people who share time with children, for people who invite us into acts of justice. We have so much to give thanks for. We pray today for direction and insight, assurance and invitation. Open our hearts and minds to your love for each of us. Amen. Over the summer, I visited a church that had a sign resting on its coffee bar. In bright, joyful colors, it said, you belong here. That's all it said. There were no asterisks or caveats, no subtexts of, of exclusion, just the assurance, you belong here. At our very core, we are searching for that kind of place and that kind of belonging. But we all know and have experienced, despite whatever longing we might have, it's not always easy to find that kind of connection. A YMCA survey this year showed that 60% of Canadians feel disconnected from their communities in some way. Sometimes it's hard to find a place where we feel we truly belong. Sometimes, um, for probably many of us here this morning, seek out places like Knox or another faith community to connect with others, to have those meaningful conversations that we really want to have and to step deeper into our faith and spirituality and also to make a difference in our community. The Barna Group found that 40% of practicing Christians mentioned a sense of belonging and community as a key reason for showing up on Sunday mornings. When we get it right, our churches can be that kind of place. They can be the kind of place where everyone who shows up has a sense of belonging. Our churches can be the kind of place where we come together in all of our beautiful, great diversity and experience the sacred with one another. When we have those conversations and when we sit next to each other and when we have coffee together. Our churches can be the kind of place where we are reminded and reassured again and again and again of the great love present with us. And they can be the kind of place where we are inspired and challenged to be that love and hope for others in the world. When we get it right, our churches can be places where we are all nurtured and supported and we share our gifts and we share our needs and together we become these change makers that we heard from a few of them this morning. But together we become change makers in our communities and further out. Today's text is about that kind of place. Today we have the remarkable story of Lydia, a woman living in Philippi, which is now Greece, and she's living there in the first century. And as we know, the majority of women in the Bible aren't named. That we know Lydia's name tells us that this story and her role in it was super important to the early Christians. Lydia is a successful businesswoman. She was a dealer in purple cloth, an expensive textile reserved for the wealthy elite. 
The dyeing of the cloth was labor intensive and it was actually made from crushed shells of snails. And so the only people who were able to afford this cloth were the very wealthy. And we are told in this text that Lydia also has her own household. She has people around her, servants and others who are traveling with her, another sign of her wealth. Despite her standing and her success and all the people around her, Lydia seeks out something else. A community of women have gathered at a place that the text calls a house of prayer, a house set just outside the city walls, along the river, and Lydia is among those women. Maybe, like us, she's searching for a place to belong and to feel connected. Maybe she's seeking answers to questions. Maybe she's seeking a connection with the sacred. Whatever she is seeking, she brings it with her into this community. And there she finds that sense of belonging. On the same day, Paul and Barnabas also come to Philippi. They are traveling through the Roman Empire to tell the story of Jesus to anyone who will listen. And so they find this house of prayer and they connect with Lydia and the others who are gathered there. And we don't know the reason. Maybe it was the preaching. Maybe it was the prayer. Maybe it was the supportive group of women in that place and in that moment. But the loving presence of the sacred moved Lydia to be baptized and to offer then her own gifts to the community. She makes a difference in that community, and that community makes a difference in Lydia's life. It's the giving and receiving, the offering of gifts and the acceptance of the gifts that are present there. This story, I think, gives us the framework for our own community of faith. No matter who we are, wealthy or average or without means, whether we are wise elders or children running around the gym, we all come into this place with longings and questions. We all come seeking kinship and belonging. And in a healthy community, we come together with these hopes and questions and needs and longings, and we walk through these doors and we see the sign, you belong here. And we believe it because we feel that sacred, inclusive, no asterisk love present. And when we're in that kind of healthy community, then we're moved to share our own gifts gifts of our time and our wisdom and our care and our baked goods and our teaching and our compassion and our administrative skills and our singing voices and our minds and our expertise and our life experiences and our questions. And somehow we weave this together into this imperfect place that makes space for all of us. And we live into beloved community a place where we all belong. I always hear this message in the words and example of Father Greg Boyle. I've spoken about him before because he is my favorite theologian. Father Boyle is a Jesuit priest who was sent to a parish in the Aliso Pico housing project in East Los Angeles in the 1980s. It was the height of gang violence in Los Angeles and Father Boyle quickly understood that his role was to be a loving presence in the midst of violence and despair. As he offered those gifts and his gifts to the community, what he found in return was a deep understanding of kinship, of a belonging to this community. And that kinship became the foundation for an employment program that linked former gang members to jobs that helped them find new ways to live and ways to move forward in healthy ways. And that job program became one of the most successful in the country. 
a program with one of the lowest recidivism rates in the United States. And so I want you to hear from Father Greg Boyle this morning his own words. Roman tells me this is going to be a little clunky, but it looks like you did that pretty seamlessly, Roman. Let's hear Father Boyle. I don't know how well you could hear that, but the gist of it is, it is not about me, but it is about us together being in kinship. The belonging and the kinship are what make a difference. The mutual relationships and the support and care for one another and seeing the sacredness in each person. That's what makes all the difference in the world. All of us here are real human beings who come with all sorts of baggage and needs and gifts and wisdom. When I bring myself, my gifts and my failings, my challenges, my experiences, my longings, and I share that with everybody, and you share your gifts and your failings and your challenges and your wisdom and your experiences, then we share belonging and we begin to build this kinship. Where else on a Sunday morning can we be in a community with newcomers and CEOs, former teachers and people who can't find work, high school students and stay-at-home parents, and even a dog or two? It is knowing that we all bring needs and gifts no matter who we are, and that is what makes a difference. We belong. This morning we heard from four people who found belonging in this place and have shared their gifts with us all in such beautiful and surprising ways, perhaps. They are our Lydia's. People like Christine and Law, Vi and Dennis, but also each one of you. You belong here in this place, with your baggage, with your wisdom, with your gifts, with your sorrow, with your joy. And when we recognize one another in that sacred love, we build the beloved community. Let's be the church together. Amen.